Hey Sally, how are you? Oh, you've been wearing your raglan um, t-shirt? Oh, I love that. I was so happy to see you in class. Hey Janie, welcome. Hi Pat, how are you? Whew. I was a couple minutes late because this camera I have right here, see it? See this big honker? I actually knocked over the whole tripod and I almost thought I was going to be stuck there forever because there is probably 50, 60, 80 pounds um, of weights counterbalancing the camera on the other side of the jib I have it on. So, <laughs> but then I thought to myself, oh, I'll lay it down, take the weights off upright the tripod part and then put everything back together so I had a little bit of excitement here in my studio a couple minutes before um, I actually came on so I apologize for being a little late also I apologize for not having a fit tip Tuesday this week I taught for stitches at home over the weekend um, apparently Sally is wearing her raglan sleeve top that she made during class which I'm so excited about the raglan sleeve um, and I just, I had so many things to do to catch up from teaching all weekend that I didn't have time to shoot a Fit Tip Tuesday video. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to let out a shirt um, during, you know, live during Fab Fit Friday because I promised I would get that going. Um, let me see. Hey, everybody. Uh... Okay, so, hi Andrea, and hi Nadiv, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but welcome. Um, Alright, so let's talk about this first. Let me see if I can, I wonder if I can make it, I, I'm going to take it off so I can show you some stuff. Basically, this is another one of the shirt jackets that I made a fleece one for my husband over the, um, you know, before Christmas, for Christmas. And then I decided it'd be also be nice for my dad because um, he was modeling it for me when I was working on my husband. So let me show you this. Let me, I'm gonna switch my view here so you can see in a better light. Hi Deb, welcome. All right, so let me make this big so we can see what we're doing. And I have it really bright so you can see the detail here. So basically this is another one of my shirt jackets that I'm making and I fine tune the pattern a little bit more after making the first one. So you can see here um, it has a sleeve and I cut my cuffs out on the bias. And then here is my um, black faux suede. Let's see if I can make it a little bit brighter. Ooh, that's a little bit too bright. There we go. Um, black faux suede um, facing for the cuff. And I made the, you know, the vent here. See? And um, the collar is or the collar stand has the faux suede as well on the inside. And I was not paying attention when I cut out my pieces, so I actually added a center back seam to this one because I didn't cut out the back on the fold. This originally didn't have a center back seam, but I think I'm gonna leave the center back seam in and I'm gonna develop this shirt jacket as a pattern as soon as I'm done with my new jeans because um, I'm really excited about it. So basically, I just wanted to show you my progress on this. I have a wide um, button placket that I also made out of the faux suede that I still have to stitch down. I have to add buttons, and I have to hem it. And if you could have seen the look on my dad's face when he tried it on yesterday, it was like just as exciting as Lenny's face when he saw his. So I think this is a really nice... Um, man gift, although I know my daughters would want one as well, so I have to hurry up and get this into a pattern so I can share it with you guys. 
Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to share my progress on this. I'm going to put it back on my ditto form here. Okay. All right. Okay, so now let's get to the topic at hand here. Let me make it a little darker now. Hi, Diane and Judy. Welcome, ladies. I'm so happy to be back with you guys. Um, last Friday, I taught two classes, so it was a little bit of a crazy week, a weekend. But, um, you know, I really wanted to get this shirt project going. This is a Talbot's sleeveless shirt, and it's just a basic button-down shirt with, like, a little collar, okay? And if you follow me on my Instagram, I have pictures of, let me just show you what they look like here. Um, this is my friend who loves this shirt and she doesn't want to give it up. So let me just show you here how it fits now. Hi, Mary. Welcome. Um, oh, I do have an ouchie on my arm. I burnt my... I burnt myself there, sorry. Um, uh, Jamie says she really likes the faux suede accents. Well, you know the other nice thing about the faux suede is that you don't have to finish the edge. It does not ravel. So it makes really easy work of um, finishing the insides of the shirt. I did turn the edges under, but I didn't have to like worry about them fraying or whatever, and it just really worked nicely. Hi, Lauren. Welcome. Happy New Year to everybody. I'm If I haven't um, said Happy New Year to you, welcome and Happy New Year. Um, this is the shirt that I'm, we're, we're going to work on today. And I just want to show you, that's how it fits in the front. That's how it fits on the side. You can see it's sort of snug through the bust. And it's, it's actually snug everywhere. Um, not down the front, but then when you look at the back, it's, it's pretty snug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some panels to the side seams. And I always find it very interesting. Um, this shirt is a Talbot's, um, Talbot's Haberdashery Petite Wrinkle Resistant Shirt. Now, my original idea was I was going to take apart the seams um, and show you how to, you know, do that and work with that. But when I started to take apart the seams, um, everything was glued down, like permanently. Let me see if I can find... Um, oh, I had a little scrap that I cut. So let me show you what I did here. I picked out... Hi, Ruth. Welcome. Good morning. You must be on the, on the West Coast. It's 1 o'clock here on the East Coast. Um... All right, so see what I did here is I took apart the narrow hem, and even the narrow hem was glued together. It was crazy. So I decided that instead of trying to unglue the seams, I basically just cut them apart. So you can see here, let me make it a little brighter, and a little bigger. Well, so basically, I cut the side seam from, this is the armhole right here, all the way down to the hem. It's a fairly short, you know, it's a petite shirt, so it's it's fairly um, short. The whole, the whole side seam is probably a grand total of 12 or 14 inches. Oh, Ruth is from Outer Banks, North Carolina. Okay. Um, that's beautiful there in the Outer Banks. Oh my goodness. Um, please stay safe on Sunday, Monday, because I hear it's going to be the storm coming up the coast, or I don't know if it's coming, no, it's actually coming from Canada, but, um, if it comes down there, please be careful. All right, so what I did was I cut this off, and I'm going to show you on the other side, and then I had some, look at this nylon knit fabric I had. Um, one of my friends gave this to me a long time ago. I've had it in my stash. <laughs> Excuse me. I've had it in my stash forever and it matches perfectly. I was dying when I pulled out the piece I had left and look how nice that matches. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it permanently to the front. So I've already done that and I, I fused some double-sided um, double fusible tape up here. I turned the edge down and I, and I hemmed it right there. And then I sewed it on my serger using a four thread stitch. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just baste it together on this side. So if we look at the opposite um, side edge here, I'm just going to baste that together and I'm going to have her try it on. And then I can, um, I can fine tune the fit because I'm guessing she might need a little bit of room at the base of the armhole, but not a ton. But And then we might actually have to angle it out more in the small of her back to get it to fit right. So I don't know 100% how much we need to add. Um, oh, <laughs> thank you, Mary. I sneezed and Mary said, bless you. Oh, that tradition of saying bless you, I have to say less and less people say bless you if you're somewhere and you sneeze. I think it's because they're all running away thinking you have like cooties or COVID or something. So I, I don't have COVID. Um, and plus you couldn't catch it for me if I did since we're uh, virtual. But um, I did I did have some family members catch COVID. And so I was feeling a little bit stressed by that. So I tested myself twice. Um, and I'm keeping myself very um, quarantine still so I can go to my parents without having to wear a mask all day but um, yeah, that's just a little aside so basically here that's how this is going to work and I'm not gonna I think just to keep it in you know keep it in a neat tidy manner here I'm just gonna push this together and I'm gonna baste these together on the sewing machine and then after I do that, I'm going to show you how I took apart and it inserted the fabric on the other one, on the other side here. But really, I think the most interesting thing of this whole experience is I am like, I don't want to say I'm shocked, but I'm super surprised at all the glue or adhesive that I'm finding in these ready-to-wear things that I'm taking apart. Um... Oh, I do. I have red on today, ladies. I'm super excited with my red um, top. I'll tell you, the more I wear colors, the more I'm enjoying them. So I want to thank everybody for encouraging me to, you know, wear bright colors. All right. So basically now for this. Oh, hi, Jerry. Welcome. Oh, happy new year. And thank you so much. I hope everybody is staying safe out there. Um, I feel like it's the forever, um, it's going to be something we're going to have to think about for a long time. All right, so basically here, I'm going to put the non-stretchy or the, the cotton fabric against the feed teeth, and I'm going to let the knit be on top. This is a very, um, a very stable knit. It's, it's probably got... 10% stretch if and vertically it's got n next to no stretch so I'm gonna have that be on top I'm gonna make my stitch length really big I'm gonna make it five and I'm just gonna for now oops, I'm just gonna sew this together here just so it's not flopping around I'm not even gonna back tack I'm just gonna base this edge together And then I'm just going to, because I really don't, it really doesn't matter to me where, what my seam allowance or anything is at this point, because like I said, I think I'm going to have to take it in in some spaces. So for now, we're just going to baste it. And then just to let you know, I'll show you this in a minute. All right. So when I get to the bottom, I'm sewing straight over the hem that I unsewed. So when I finally finish it, I'm going to fold it up and hem it all together 
I'll fold it back up and hem everything together. All right, so that's that's this one side here. You see now it's back into a armhole. And you can see that this is going to be very, um, it's not going to be noticeable. It's not going to stick out like a sore thumb. I really feel like, you know, this fabric was a perfect match for this shirt. So let's deal with this other side here. And I just want to show you, if you guys have clothes that you need to take apart, um, you know, just be aware that they may be glued together. So let me get this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to push it and I'm going to make it big here. Okay, so this is the... Okay, so this is the hem. And I started picking it apart. And you really have to take some of the hem apart so then you can fold it back up and hem it back after you add an insert. Um, but I was really, really surprised. You know, it looks perfect, and I guess the, the reason why they get perfection in their seams, in their hems, is because they stick it together before they sew it. And this is like the second shirt that I've experienced this, experienced this on. Um, when I was working on my mom's stripe, red and white stripe shirt from Coldwater Creek, um, that shirt as well had glued seams. So the problem is with the glued seams is that after you take the stitching out, the hem does not just come apart. You have to physically pull it apart. You know, and this is a pretty fine cotton, so I didn't want to damage the fabric and struggle with taking out the whole side seam because the side seams are glued together too. So basically, once I got it started, you know, I can pull it apart, but you can see it's glued. Um, so I'm just going to take this apart a little bit here. And I'm just picking at the stitching on the right side to get it to... All right. Now I only need to take it apart a couple inches because I'm literally going to fold it right back up after I sew the, the, pan, the side panel on. So I don't want to make more work than necessary. But look at this. I've taken the hem out, but this the second fold is not just coming apart. And the reason why is because that's what's glued. So basically they glued this whole raw edge to the shirt before they sewed it. So literally I'm just ripping apart the glue. Okay. So now I've got a oops, sorry. Now I've got a free end here. Okay. And I on the other side I started taking this apart too. And literally I, I could barely even get it apart. It was glued so tight. So to make short work of this now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off this quarter inch or three eighth inch allowance here. And I'm just going to use my rotary cutter. I have the hem laying flat so it cuts nicely and accurately. And I'm literally just going to cut right along the fold in, in the seam allowance here. I want to cut as little off as possible. So basically I'm just going to cut this and I'm going to cut right through the base of the armhole. Okay, and then I'm going to do it on the other side as well. So if you don't want to use your rotary cutter, I'll show you with scissors here. You can do the same thing with your scissors. You just want to butt those scissors right up against the double thickness of the seam allowance. Just cut right along here. So I'm just going to cut this off. And I'm just going to cut this off. Alright, so you can see this is 
really stuck together. Like if I try to take this apart, it's not coming apart. So that's why um, sometimes it's better just to cut it off than try to take it apart. All right, so now I've got my side seam prepped here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my iron and I'm gonna prep my fabric that I'm gonna use as an insert. Move that out of the way. Here is my pressing surface. Okay, so I have a piece of, honestly, where did that go? I think it fell off the table when I was having my little camera disaster. Okay, so what I did was I cut myself a two and a half inch strip of this fabric, and I'm not going to need all of the width of this. I made it wider than I'm pretty sure I'm going to need. And I've already cut myself a piece of double-sided fusible tape. So I've got that ready to go. Let me get my iron. Okay, so I am just going to use... I discovered that my little papers from the backs of my shipping labels um, work really well as mini press cloths because this is a nylon knit. Okay, it's very slippery and I detested it on a scrap and it melts really easily. So I'm going to take my double-sided fusible tape and I'm going to stick it on there. I'm actually going to trim it to size. Okay, and then I'm going to put the paper back down I think because this double-sided fusible tape is older, the paper doesn't stay with the, the, the thing, the film. I'm going to put this, this is the back of my label. I'm going to put the paper down. And then I can just press on that fusible tape. And you can see it did a really nice job. I did not damage my fabric at all. So now I'm going to peel the backing off and I'm going to press it down like this. And see the heat from the iron on the cloth left over from pressing the first one actually allows me to finger press. You know, it's not permanent, but it allows me to get it into position like that. Then I can put my little mini press cloth back down and just give it a little bit of more. All right, so now I have this finished and doubling it with that tape is going to give it a nice consistency. Um, you can see it's nice and firm. It has some give, but not a lot. All right. All right, let me move this out of the way. So something that I noticed that I didn't take into consideration when I did the first side is if you're going to top stitch the top of your extra strip, why not make it the same width away as the, um, the seam finishing the armhole. So my top stitching is a little bit farther away on my first strip, but I'm going to make it match my second strip. So. What I'm going to do here is, is I'm just going to make a little guide line, a, a little guide on it with chalk, like this. So I think it's probably just a quarter inch. So I'm just making a little yellow line there. And now let's go to the sewing machine. Okay. So, in addition to using my my label. My UPS or you know my my four by six label backings as a press cloth I can also use it as a a starter for the knit so it doesn't sink into the machine so I'm just gonna stick it like this 
I'm going to line up the little guideline that I drew. And then I'm going to make it darker here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to stitch this. And I'm going to bring my stitch length back down to maybe, I don't know, two and a half, let's use. So I'm just going to stitch this. Adrian would like to know, would the heat of the iron loosen the glue and make it easier for you to open? Well, that's a very good question, Andrea. I hadn't even thought of that. Let me see. All right, so let's just look at this first. This is nicely stitched now. Okay. Um... Let me see. I am going to heat this up with my iron and let's see if it'll come apart easier. But I'm curious about that. That's a good question. Let me just heat it up. All right. I know you can take interfacing off by heating it. Let me see if I can pick this apart easier now. Let's see. This pressing surface is hot. Let me move that out of the way. Let's see here. Probably I should heat it up after I... After I take the stitching out. Let me just take a little stitching out here. I think the the glue also makes it hard to take the stitching out. But I just I don't know, I guess I didn't realize how many clothing companies actually glued their fabrics together, their seam allowances together before they sewed. All right, that's not a good Let me see this. Let me take a little bit more of the hem out and see if I can pull, if heating it up makes it easier to pull the second layer. If I take the stitching out first, then I can heat it up and try it. Let me see. All right, so. So now, all right, so I've got another section of it where it's glued. Let me heat that up and see. I think this is making a riveting episode. <laughs> all right, let me just see. We're playing with glued seams here. I'm just going to heat it up, and then I'm going to see if I can, if heating it up makes the glue release. Let's see. Try it. Um, yeah, not really. So the answer to that, Andrea, is no. I mean, the part that I already released is coming up, but then when I get to where I haven't pulled it out yet, it's just as hard. So... So I guess it's not like interfacing. I think if you glue it, if you heat the glue up, it still stays just as hard to get out. So that was an interesting experiment though. All right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my shirt, and in case you're wondering here, I am gonna permanently stitch the, um, I'm going to permanently stitch the 
the extra fabric to the front, okay, and then I'm just going to baste it to the back. So I'm going to put right sides together here, and now I'm excited because my top stitching is going to match the top stitching on the armhole. So I'm going to, I'm going to be sewing this on my serger, so I'm going to pin this actually far away so it's not going to be near my presser foot, and that will help keep the, those, those top edges even. You know, but then of course I'm also going to use my wonder clips. And I have Diane watching me, so I'm going to make sure I do it correctly with the red on top, like that. And then I'm just going to clip it in a few places here. Okay, and happy, happy news, I've already um, set up my serger with white thread. And the other thing is, when I get to the hem, remember, I'm going to unfold that tiny little narrow hem and I'm going to stitch it all the way down while it's unfolded. Um, and if you're working with a knit and a woven like I am, you want to be really careful that you don't press, I mean, or pull the knit vertically. You want it to lay one to one. Okay, so I've got that all nice and clipped together. Oh, Andrea says glued edges are going to make alterations harder to do with purchased garments. Well, unless you, you cut off, you just cut it off like I did. That actually worked out really easy. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is... Get my serger over here. So I know that this is already working because I, I stitched the first one, but the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to lift up my presser foot and I'm going to push the fabric under there until I can see the fact that the needles are sinking into the very top of the strip and the armhole fabric. So basically I'm going to the needles are holding it there, okay? And I'm not cutting anything off. Um, and now that I have the needles sunk into the fabric, I'm gonna take out this one pin that I put in there just so it doesn't cause any agita. All right, and then, I have a tangle of cord over here. All right, so I'm just gonna surge this now. And like I said, I'm not cutting anything off, although it looks like my needle is unthreaded. It is. Okay, so interesting. The needle that came unthreaded, let me just take this out for a second here. Okay, I'm going to... stash for white thread to get myself ready for today and I could only find three spools of maxi lock that's white and then I had this one and I want to show the spool to you here this was in my stash and I want to show you the con the the um, condition of it the plastic cone is so brittle look it breaks right off okay see see that and I think the, fab, the thread itself is yucky. And so I find it very interesting that um, this thread, 
It's like a no brand um, thread is breaking. Everything else is working except the one that's this no brand thread. So I'm gonna I'm gonna thread it back up and try it again. And if I have another problem, I'm just gonna switch to a regular spool of white thread because I don't have another white. I'm gonna have to buy some new white thread. I very rarely stitch with white, so I was kind of surprised to see that I actually am that short of white thread. So let me just thread this again and then we'll try it. But really, the quality of thread really does make a difference. And some sergers are more agreeable than others, and you can get away with, um, you know, you can get away with using thread that's not fabulous easier in some sergers than others. But even in this my ovation here, which is very agreeable usually, usually, it's a, it's having some trouble with that thread. Um, and I think what I want to do is just because it's having trouble, I'm just gonna try it on just the edge of this because I don't want to mess up the shirt. I just want to make sure it's going to stitch okay. All right, so it's working again. So let me start out with the shirt again. Um, I have a perfect match here, so I think I'm just going to leave it like that, okay? So I'm just going to cut off the tail really close, and I'm just going to start over. And I'm going to leave that stitching there because it's holding the two edges perfectly together. But again, I'm making sure that I'm sinking those needles right into both layers before I start stitching. Okay, so now I'm just going to surge down. I'm going to surge right off the unfolded hem. All right, so let's take a look at this. I'm just going to push my machine back here for a second. Okay, so you can see here now I have the top let me make it a little brighter. The sun is peeking through my thing, so I have weird light. Let me just show you, though. I'm going to cut my tail pretty short here. I'm going to take this flat bodkin, and I'm going to insert it into the looper threads, like this. And I only need to insert it about an inch, like that. Okay, I'm going to push it so that the hole in the bodkin is right near the top of the seam, and I'm going to just put my tail in there. And then once I get it in there and I start pulling it, I'm going to cut this tail so it's shorter than the inch that I wove the, the bodkin through the looper thread. So when I pull it, it's in there and I don't have to fuss with it. Okay, so that finishes the top of the serger chain. And you can see now that I have a beautifully matched um, panel of fabric right under the armhole here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to base this together and um, I think I'm going to see my friend on Sunday. I'm going to fit this onto her and finish it and then I will show you the after pictures so before I fixed it, how tight it was, and then afterward, how um, it fit as well. So again, I'm just going to put right sides together here, and I'm literally just going to baste this.
So on the sewing machine, I'm going to want the knit on top like I did the first time. So I'm just going to pin it together and then I'm going to just baste it together. Alright, so that's my fun little project I wanted to share with you. Uh, mostly I was excited because the fabric I found to make side panels with are match so well to the shirt fabric that I, I was kind of excited about that because a lot of times you know if you're adding fabric to a project it can be very noticeable that you added fabric because it doesn't look like it goes with the, the original garment but in this case I think this really matches I'm kind of excited all right so let me just get put my serger away and get my sewing machine over here So again, I'm just going to base this. Oh, hi, Lauren. You actually deleted your last message. Oh, do you want to tell us your message again? Okay, let me see here. All right. I'm just going to base this together like I did the other side. And I'm going to start from the hem and work my way up on this one so I can have the knit on the top. It really doesn't matter which end I start at because I'm actually going to take the stitching out after I fit it on. All right, so let's just sew this. Oh, I'm going to make my stitch length five again. Tacking or anything. Oh, Mary says, Jen, I believe we have a troll that needs to be deleted and banned. I know, I think there's a couple. I don't know what those VOR.ONG comments are. Um, I don't know what those are, but when I get those on my comments, like after I shoot a regular video, like sometimes I upload a regular video and I get those comments, I just delete them and report them and block them. Um, I get them more and more now because my channel's getting larger. I think it's more popular for people to post stuff. Um, Okay, so Lauren says, just saying hi, how do you see a letter instead of my picture? I do see your picture. I don't see a letter on yours. Actually, I think you're the only one that I see a picture on. Everybody else has a letter by their little avatar. I don't, oh, you're asking maybe how to make it a letter? Um, I don't know. Is mine a letter? Oh, I see, like if I say something like, um, if I type something in here, like, hi, thank you guys for joining me. See, I'm a, I'm a letter too. I think it's if you go into your profile on your YouTube dashboard, if you uploaded a picture, it's going to show. So I go look in your dashboard and see if you can take your picture off. If there's no picture, I think it'll put your first initial. I think, I think that's what it is, because that picture on mine is the picture I uploaded to my YouTube as my profile picture. So if you don't want a profile picture, oh, <laughs> Diane says I should have a picture on mine. You do, you have horse. You have a horse grazing, grazing in a field, and every time I see it, I know it's you. If you change it to a picture, I don't know, that might screw me up, but you can if you want to. All right, so basically, that's my exciting 
tutorial for today. Um, let's take one last look at it before. Um, I know Diane says you're not a letter. I see your picture. I know because that's my profile picture I put on my um, that I put on my profile, my YouTube profile, or it might even be your Google profile. Google is attached to YouTube now. All right, so let's just look at this really quickly. I know it's hard to see because it's white on white, but basically you can see I have this nice panel here, and it's got a little bit of give. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my friend try this on inside out so I can take it in where I need to take it in on the back side of the seam. And in doing that, my guess is this rectangle is going to become a little bit shaped. Okay, I'm guessing I'm not going to need all this room under the arm. So it might become more of a wedge or a triangle shape. That's what I'm guessing might happen. Um, but I will keep you posted and I will definitely show you the finished results. And actually maybe, um, well, see, I'm not going to see her till Sunday. So if I can keep it another week, I can show you how to fine tune the fit of it based on how it fits her, not next Friday, but the Friday after. So we'll see. But basically now I have it all set and ready to go. Um, for her to try back on and look at she's a cute little petite thing all right so that's my project there oh hi Anne it's okay <laughs> I don't know if this was one of my more exciting um, tutorials I basically showed how to insert fabric into a side seam to make more room on a top that's too tight and um, we discovered that a lot of seams are glued together, so I actually just cut it apart. And another thing that I'm excited about is my, if you took a class from me over the weekend, or you might have even just noticed that my camera blinked on and off, um, and the reason why that's doing that is because I've grown out of my, I have 100 gigs of space on my computer, and I've grown out of it. So my husband has ordered me a new hard drive and he's actually going to put it in on Saturday. So starting next week I should have a computer that works so much nicer because right now it's really clogged up with, because there's no space for the, the things to move around in there. So um, I will be getting an upgrade to my computer. Super excited. And I also want you guys to know that I'm, I haven't mentioned it today or, you know, I've talked about it on my channel in a while, I don't think, but my new jeans pattern is perking along in the background. I'm working with one of my pattern testers to put together a sample for a low full butt, you know, a low butt version, um, and I'm sewing together the average, the average butt version, and um, I'm going to be working on the instructions and getting the pattern's been graded. I've been working very hard in the background on that, so. Um, I'm really excited to say that it will definitely be ready to launch in February. So, super excited. And then, after I finish that pattern, I'm going to make my shirt jacket, aka the shacket pattern, um, and have that ready. And I'm going to grade it down. And it's going to be a unisex, no bust start, no shaping. Um, you can take it in. I mean, you can make it more fitted by taking in the sides. Um, but it's going to be a an oversized shirt jacket, and I'm super excited about it. All right, so oh, Ruth says that she loves tearing things apart. You know what, Ruth? I have to say I love tearing things apart, too. I would never want to do alterations as a business because I think that that would make me um, a little bit nervous about you know, taking apart other people's loved garments and fixing them. But I do love engineering and figuring out how to do an alteration. So if you like ripping things apart, I have a lot of alterations videos on my YouTube channel. So if you're looking for something, you know, check in there and see if I've covered that topic because I have done a bunch of alterations videos. Um, I try to do one a month on my Fit Tip Tuesdays. And actually, this was supposed to be a Fit Tip Tuesday, but 
because I started to get behind, I didn't want to hold it for another week. So um, I have a different Fit Tip Tuesday. On Fit Tip Tuesday, I'm going to be sharing how to, I'm going to be showing actually one of the adjustments I made on pants pattern to pick up extra vertical length. And then I'm going to show what the resulting shape is. And my original thought was, oh, well, if, um, you know, if doing all of this extra work only results in this shape along the side changing, why don't you just make the change right on the side? Well, I have an answer for that, and I have a, I have a reason to actually slice and dice the pattern, do the more invasive adjustment um, instead of just trimming the side or changing the shape of the edge because every adjustment that you make to a pattern inside the pattern if you trace a clean copy of it and lay it on top of the original the adjustment is going to show as some sort of change along the edge so basically I'm going to be dealing with that on Tuesday and I'm kind of excited about it because first I thought I was going to say oh, why don't you just scoop it out of the top or trim it off the side? But now I have a reason for actually doing these more invasive adjustments. So that's what I'm going to be covering on Tuesday for Fit Tip Tuesday. And next week or the week after, I'll have the shirt finished because I'm going to get back together with my friend and I will show you what the resulting shape of the side panel is. I'm guaranteeing to you that it's not going to stay a rectangle. It's going to be tapered in areas where we don't need as much ease, and it's going to be wider where we do need more ease. So um, I'm excited about that. And, um, yep, yeah, that's my report for now. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Friday and have a lovely weekend. If anybody's watching and you're taking pants fitting with me um, on Fabric Mart Fabrics, that's on Sunday from 3 to 5 Eastern Standard Time. That class is completely full. And actually, I apologize if anyone tried to get into the February class because that sold out in five minutes too. So I have two pants fitting classes in January and February that are sold out. Um, but I will be offering more in the future, so don't worry. Um, but, you know, there'll be more chances. But in any case, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys following along with me. And anyone who's still watching me at the end of this live stream will be the first to hear that I'm going to be having a, yay, we made 25,000 subscribers celebration on my YouTube channel. And there's going to be some pretty impressive giveaways. I'm not going to tell you what they are yet, but I am collecting giveaways from some of the companies that I do you know social media with and I have a very exciting um, prize to give away and I have some others in the works as well so stay tuned for um, you know, more information about the 25,000 subscriber YouTube channel uh, celebration that I'll be having probably in a couple months I'm at like 23 and a half so it's going to take a few more months to get up to 25,000 but I just wanted to let you guys know that to show my appreciation, I will be planning some extra fun with really good prizes. Um, wait, what happened here? Uh, Jerry says, Jennifer, is the jeans pattern going to be for stretch denim? Yes, it's going to be for stretch denim. Not super duper stretch, but denim with give. And it's going to be really cool. I'm super excited about this pattern. Um, and you all are congratulating me on my channel. Well, guess what? I couldn't do it without you guys. So I am thanking you because if you guys didn't subscribe to my channel and join me, I wouldn't have subscribers. So that's why I'm like super excited. Um, and I'm going to come up with some fun. So I wish you all luck ahead of time because you're going to want to win these prizes. Well, win them, but I'm going to have a drawing. So I will um, be filling you on all the details on that coming up in the in weeks to come so yay super excited couldn't do it without you guys so I really appreciate all of you and yeah that's it 
All right, so I think I'm going to sign off now and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna delete and block all of these lovely, I think there's three, three different spammy kind of comments. So I'm gonna go through and fix that up before it causes I don't know what, I don't understand the purpose of it. But in any case, I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. I will see you next week for another episode of Fab Fit Friday. And um, I think I'll be showing you finished jeans because I'm working on my another pair of jeans are going to be finished. Maybe I'll even give you a peek at the instructions. So that's what I think will be happening next Fab, next week on Fab Fit Friday. All right, well, I'm going to go. You guys enjoy and stay safe. And, you know, it's um, a holiday weekend, so if anybody has Monday off, I hope you get some good sewing in. All right, so have a lovely day, and I'll talk to you again very, very soon.